Let's talk about S then. Okay, this is kind of like how we put it all on rocket fuel, basically. So we've gone through how we transform existing stuff, how we add lead generation tactics and strategies, how we add conversion tactics and strategies, how we add maximizing custom value tactics. Now, how do we, how do we systemize the L, the C, and the M? This is, I believe, something that we are completely on our own at doing this. Okay. I think this really sets us apart, which is why the million plus day, when they come here and we take them through these three systems, people have never seen this before. Okay, now I'm, I ain't got time to take you all through this, but um, what we're going to do is obviously you've got three systems. You've got the lead generation system. Okay, so how much of it can we systemize? Well, we can systemize all of it. Um, and how much of it can we then automate? Conversion system, what can we systemize and then what can we automate? Now, if people are involved in the sales process, you can't fully automate that, can you? But we can systemize it, and I'll tell you what I mean by that in a minute. And then once we've got our customers, how do we, how do we create a maximized customer value system? You're going to do that tonight as the homework. I shouldn't call it homework, should I? The joy work. The only way to build a world-class and highly profitable business is to create a system-led business. I think I said that in about 2001, so I've been doing this a long time. As I told you yesterday, I read the e-myth after I believed that stuff. And then the e-myth re kind of confirmed everything to me that, that that's the, the only way to do it. So what we're looking at is, and obviously Gerber says this, if you had to start the business tomorrow in a new area, could you do it? Well, we could, because we've got systems and procedures for everything. But most businesses couldn't. What I'm going to do now, we've got an exercise. So if we, if we turn to your blue folder, and it's your assignments, And it's assignment seven. Okay, can we, we're going to do this as, as a group, well, as individual groups. So just to keep it simple, if Steve and Dave work together, if Mike, Ellie, and David work together, and Mike and Steve work together on this, and I'm happy for you to stay in here, or you can... You know, go anywhere in, in this building as a group. So, using the case study of an accountant targeting small businesses, create the conversion steps which will be part of their system that will then be automated as much as possible. We call this a strategic sales system. To do this, your starting point is the lead that's generated. In this case, let's assume it's an inbound phone call from a business owner. So, business owner's been on their website. The website said, look, you need to call us or filling in a form to arrange a meeting. So the business owner is actually pick, picked up the phone and is calling the office, okay? Everyone clear? The end point is when they convert into a client. Your assignment is to add the steps in between. Use the next page to do this. Then as a group, we'll create an awesome strategic sales system for the accounting firm using all the ideas from the group. So if you turn the page, you've got this diagram, okay? So you've got, right at the far left, do you know where you are, Mike? Yeah. yeah. On the far left, you've got inbound lead. So okay, so that's the phone call. And right at the far right, you've got the client acquired. So this, this is what I'm talking about when we take a high-level view of the system. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in all the different parts of that system, each step. Okay? So let me give you an example. I'll give you the first one. So the inbound lead comes in. So that's a client. And that's the inbound lead. OK, so let, let me explain so you've got context to this. So let's say I'm the business owner. I'm ringing your firm. Tell me what happens next. 
We answered the telephone really nicely with a very right. clear answer. Right. OK, gone too far. Are we going to let the phone ring 30 times? Four times. No. Four or less, yeah? yeah. So, so, inbound, so, the, so, so answered, answered within four rings. By a person. <laughs> By a person, yeah. Painful. Yeah, Painful. But you're right, by a person. Who can speak English? Seriously. You know, not someone in India that can't even hardly put two words together. Um, so, answered within four rings. Then what? So this is all part of the inbound call, inbound lead. So answered within four rings. Then what? script of how you want the phone call. Right. Yeah, why do we want a, a script? Exactly, exactly. We, we want, and the, that's the only way we can build a world-class business. Yeah. So the script is based on the best way of doing it. And we might not get it right to begin with, but so I, I don't want you to go through what the script is. I just, just, just say a script, which includes the greeting, yeah? Then what? So, so we are going to wish... Right, in, for this, let's assume that the, the partner of one of the partners of the firm is in the office and they can be put on to them. Okay, that's how we're going to do it. Okay, so that would be. Yeah, so. Yeah. yeah, so partner takes a call. So you, you're gonna you're gonna fill in that bit and then everything else to this. Does it make sense? Yeah. It's that it's that level of detail that's not difficult that that I want you to to do. I don't want you to put the meat on the bones. So I don't want you, I don't want you to tell me what the script is. Just say there's a script. Okay. okay. And what we're gonna do? We're gonna you go away now. I'll give you 20 minutes. Then come back and then we'll like get all the best ideas and we'll create an amazing conversion system. So we've done the first stage, and we've passed on to the partner. So what's the partner going to do here? Um, he's he's going to have a script. Yeah. Yep. For a needs analysis. To understand the yeah, needs assessment. Yeah. We don't want that. I, I, I probably want to step where the assessment should pass on the details to the partner. Like yeah, so we get in details here. Yeah, good. Script or checklist, I'm comfortable with both as long as, as long as it's pretty obvious the order of the checklist. It's safer to have a script, but... We added in hold music whilst, whilst the transfer... Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> or not. <laughs> no, he said Vivaldi, but we've got... Uh, Your call is very important to us, sir. <laughs> Please hold on. Oh, the point is that the partner shouldn't ask the same questions that the receptionist says. No, absolutely not. No. Yeah, now look, because we're taking a high-level strategic view, the beauty of that is we, we can force that to happen, can't we? So if we know what the, what the receptionist is asking, and obviously they're strategic questions based around the script that, we, that is important to get that information, to, firstly to make sure that they're qualified to move on, or minimal qualification, but also then we need to know then, okay, so what, what other details does the partner want? And, and yeah, you're going to do some level of needs assessment. There's probably going to be more qualification goes on there as well. Yeah. 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 Okay, then what? Well, the object of that call is to get a meeting. Absolutely. Yep, we'll come back to that. No. Time frame. Let me just put. Look, we're all happy with that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy with that. We, uh, we... Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, let, let, yeah. Let's 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 Sorry. CRM stuff is happening. Follow up, uh, sorry, confirmation, confirmation email. Good, 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 good. 
So, email. So that's a template, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So if they've got a CRM system, it's in the CRM system, so they just got to press a couple of buttons and job done. Yeah. And a reminder, oh, days, day before. Yeah. Well, we should be by text. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Reminded by text, day before. Yeah, I'm, 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 you've just gone shooting ahead. Looking forward to seeing You've gone shooting ahead, you lot have. Okay, so look, this is great. What's so good about an email? Cost nothing. It's, uh, cost nothing. <laughs> <laughs> As a Scotsman, it costs. <laughs> <laughs> it happens automatically. Yeah, it can happen automatically. It can be saved. You can add Pardon? It can be saved. It can be saved. Speed. Yeah. Speed. Yeah. It's instant. All right. What's the downside? It could go into a spam. Might not get it. Yeah. Okay, so what, what are we going to say in the email? I mean, it's a good, we should be doing email. I'm not saying we shouldn't, but... What, what we're going to say in it? I know I didn't ask you if they detail, but I'm going to ask you now. Yeah, so, yeah, thanks. Then what? Yeah, meeting details. Would you just reiterate some of the things that you just outlined with that the partners already discussed with the prospect prospect and say, what a guy. It's great to meet you. Just to be clear, we're going to talk about this, 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 and this. And look to maybe. Can you bring this information with you? Yeah, maybe. But we're taking a strategic view. So there's something else we're going to do. We're not going straight to the pre-meeting now. We're, so we're going to do something else. We're going to send a letter. <gasps> a letter. Oh, my God. In this day and age, we're going to send a letter. Okay. A real letter, for heaven's sake. Why, why do you think a letter's a good idea? Because it's definitely one of those things. Okay. It's tangible. No one else is doing it. Yeah, it's a point of difference. But also, right, so we're meeting them at our offices, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. So, let... Ah. 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 Yeah, dietary, dietary if, if you're going to, you know, if, if relevant. <laughs> Stop making all our ideas, Wayne. Right? <laughs> Great mind. Right, think about a slippery slope. We want, so, the moment they come on the inbound call, what we want to do, so imagine that's inbound, and this is client. We want them to get on that slope and make it so easy they can't stop. Figuratively speaking. So the reason why things like the directions and the parking is a great idea is because we want to make it a no-brainer, as if a 12-year-old kid can do it, within reason. So we're going to, we're going to provide directions, because, yes, OK, most people have sat-navs, but maybe they're not going to come by a car or whatever. And maybe they might use the phone with the sat-nav on the phone, but let's make it as easy as possible. Give them, else is going to do it? Yeah. Give them clear directions. Yeah, we're, we're going to set ourselves up for the rest. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to send a letter. Yeah. Now, I'm, just, I'm going to hold up a clue on what we should do next. Okay? Ah. So we're going to send a shock and awe pack, aren't we? Now, obviously, the context of those that we've been talking about are once we got the customer. But why don't we do a shock and awe pack to get them to become a customer? Shock and awe pack is one of these. So when you get it, you go, wow, shock and awe. Huh? Oh, well, let's talk about it. Sorry? We're going to talk about it. Okay, so the beauty of shock and awe, Dan Kennedy calls them shock and awe. I can't think of a better way of describing them. So it's like shock and awe pack. Um, what could we put in there that's going to make them think, wow? Now, think about this first. They're going to get something like this, or it could be smaller, you know, like one of our smaller ones. But look, look. £3.50 for a beautiful box like that. Okay, a few quid in the post. Let's say it's going to cost us 10 quid. 
I guarantee there is no other accounting firm other than the, unless they're working with us who is doing this. So we send the shock and awe pack prior to the meeting, but it's got to include some stuff that shock and awes them. So what we're going to, so as Mike says, what are we going to put in there? What do you think? I like it. And you could have a, a lot of, the firm can have a library of books that So let's say they're going to put the e-myth in, okay. What's the, the, the headline in the e-myth book to a prospective customer who might be a small business is saying why most small businesses don't work, what to do about it? Kind of, is that not <coughs> implicitly a claim of print? No, I don't think so. I mean, for me, I, I, I wouldn't do the e-myth at that shock and I'd probably do the e-myth once they're a customer as shock and I. But look, I like Dave's thinking on, on, on that. Wouldn't it be best to have one of the partners have written a book? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, let's just pretend they haven't, but that, that would be the perfect. Because what I want to do with my shock and awe, I want to I demonstrate how brilliant we are. So if the partners have written a book, that would be perfect. It's what we, it's what we do. We you know, get the book. and. But I like, I like us doing something like that because it's a gift, isn't it? So we're giving something. What, what, what are we going to take advantage of when we're giving them the shock and awe pack? What, what law comes into play? Remember what it was called? Reciprocity. The law of reciprocity. Yeah, practice and practice, practice that for the workshops, guys. It took me years to, to figure out how to say reciprocity. We, we put in a yeah, absolutely. So some sort of um, free report, special report. Is that what you mean? Well, not special report, just the barrier so We understand there's big, you know, big, big step for you to change accountants, but this is what we can do. Yeah, so that would be in the covering letter. Okay. Are you going to put a GDPR and a Brexit? <laughs> okay, so look. We'd include this, maybe a special report. We could do something on the seven things you need to think about when appointing a new accountant for your firm. And the seven things are completely aligned to the, the accounting <coughs> practice. Um, we, could do, we could have a, a, a CD or, a, or a, what they call it, a, what's it called that you put in one of those things? Um, yeah, a CD or a drive. drive. Yeah, you, that's the word I was looking for, USB. And what do you think we could put on there that's going to make them think, God, you deliver on your testimonials. test video testimonials? Love it. And you could do it, couldn't you? You could do a personal video for me. You could say, hey, Bob, hey, Julie, just want to say, really excited, looking forward to meeting you on blah, blah, blah. So completely personal. Like 30 seconds. Um, yeah, look, um, we're really looking forward to the team. We're all revved up to meet you. Um, we've got loads of things that we're going to be able to discuss with you, how we can help you build a better business. Really excited about, I mean, Jesus Christ. And you could do that even on your iPhone. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but these days, most computers, you can, you can click a button and it, the camera will record what you say. Okay, so we don't need to bring Simon into this stuff. We, we can just do it really personal sort of stuff, yeah? So brilliant. When they get that, and they open that, and they go through it, they're, 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 they're just about there, aren't they? Because they've never been, ex uh, been given this sort of stuff before. OK, so we're not going to do any more of that stuff. That's, that's enough. So I like the pre-text. Um, for the meeting, looking forward to meeting you tomorrow, blah, 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 love that. And then, what's next? Yeah. Too far. Car park. Car park. Car park. Oh yeah, I love it. So, <laughs> so personalized. Right, this is, this is a wow. This. I, got, I, 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 I just said I went to uh, Blue Rocket, which is in Dartford, and uh, I was struggling, like, got held up in traffic, and I was really didn't get that. 
you know, stick them together and tight. And I went sailing into the car park, saying, where the hell am I going to drop my car? And he had well, a really good sign. It wasn't a cheapy, tacky one. It was a really good sign with reserve for Mike Cochran. And I was blown away, totally blown away. I, first and foremost, we all love our name. Don't we? We all love the sound of our name. And when people use it, it shows massive respect. And when you, they've reserved a car park space, it's, but a, a really nice car park sign's 60 quid. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like peanuts. Now, when we talk about, well, yeah. When we talk about car parking in the letter, we don't tell them there's a space reserved for them. We don't spoil, we don't spoil it. So we just say, <laughs> look, we do have car parking. There will be a space for you. But we don't say your name will be on it. We, so we don't, we don't waste the, the wow moment. OK, what's next? Then you could call a mobile car cleaning unit. So, so can just, get it, just do the outside. We could. Do the wheels. That would be nice. OK, what's next? Um, well, then we were uh, meet, meet and greet. Um, and we were thinking about... Um, Hang on, gone too far. The last front of house is <laughs> No, no, before you get in. So, car park. So, we've done the car park sign. What would be a bad impression of a car park in terms of... Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, cigarette butts, all that sort of stuff. So, so the system is somebody is tasked every day to make sure the car park is, is, you know, it doesn't have to look like a palace, but there's no weeds, there's no rubbish, there's no cigarette butts, blah, blah, blah. Front of house, what I mean by that is, is it obvious in signage where they go? So, yeah, from the car park. And actually, again, as we've done in the car park, is there rubbish? Are there leaves? Are there cigarette butts? Let's make sure that's clean. What about, what about the front of the office? Again, it doesn't have to be palatial. Is it clean and tidy? Is there paint coming off? Give it a lick of paint. It's 50 quid. Okay, so just the little things like open your eyes to stuff that people take for granted. It pains me when I walk past restaurants and stuff and they've got, the woodwork's all gone. It's all, all chipped off and the, the, all that. It just, you think, hmm. And these are good restaurants. And the front of house is shocking. Why would you do that? It, it, it's a lick of pain. So it's important. These things are really important. There are moments of truth. <coughs> OK, so and obviously the signage is important. So one of the biggest mistakes you see with professional firms is so you walk up to the front door, there's a buzzer, and there's a knob on the door. And what happens? People turn the knob, and they, they, they just stops on them. And I think, oh, I'll ring the, ring the bell. Just tell them what to do. Ring the bell and we'll be down with you shortly. It's just like slippery slope. So, next is what? Um, we're talking about the meet and greet. I know how uh, the, uh, the reception desk stops at the fourth of the barrier. You don't necessarily want. So, nowadays, increasingly, hotels and even big firms, particularly preferred professional services, are just getting rid of reception desks and having you know, girl receptionists with iPads coming up and saying hello Mr Jones and putting their name in and, you're, and then sitting them down in a nice comfy seat with a coffee or tea. Yeah, so drink, greeting, plus drinks menu. Love it. So, drinks menu. What do, you think, what do the good hotels do? Let's say I order a, a, a cappuccino or something with or whatever, however. What do the good hotels do? Right, so on the drinks menu, you record what my preferred drink is. <clears throat> so then next time, hopefully when I come back as a client, they go, is it your usual, well, Steve? It's more impressive than the partner Yeah, Dave. Dave's dead right. Yeah. Much more impressive for the partner to come and meet, so he's not, so he's not being this sort of stuck in the ivory tower sort of thing. Much more personalised. None of this ever happens. No, because they're so no, far up their arses, aren't they? We're in, we're in small firms here, aren't we? By the way, the risk management part would have vetoed most of this stuff by around step two. Yeah, I know that. Um, so then, then you've got the meeting. Okay, so the meeting should be systemised as well. Okay, so 
you know, what should happen is, is we, we create the best sales script and performance to get the result we want. Then we do the meeting. So we, we, we create an environment. We, we, um, we choreo choreograph the, the sales meeting to give us the best possible results. Okay. So you have the right team. Screen, screen, screen you have the right team. You've done your research, right? You know, you know roughly why it was, why it's coming to see you, what he really wants. So we were just saying, if there's other people who are going to be working, with <coughs> bring them in. It would be great to bring them in so that they can meet the team. It would. It would. Yeah. Okay. So look, that's brilliant, isn't it? I mean. That, that looks really complicated, but when you isolate each point in that, so coming back to this time frame, we obviously need time to send that and that. Mm. Or only two weeks, but we need, so you, it would be stupid, because remember, this is strategic. We don't want to book a meeting tomorrow or the next day. Stupid. And also, that shows that we're not that busy. Yeah, yeah. but we don't want to leave it two, three, four weeks either, because if they're meeting another firm, there's a chance they'll, they'll get, get it. So, you, it, again, just strategic. It's got to be at least three or four days to make sure we can get this stuff in. It doesn't want to be two weeks or more. It's too, too long. Now, this is the bit where... So that's a, what I'd call a strategic sales conversion system, sales system. But there's still stuff we can do here. Because are we going to convert everybody at the meeting? No, we're not. We're going to try to, though. I know I'm not going to convert everybody. So what I want to do, because this is strategic, I can ask questions here that give me ammunition here. I ain't got enough space. So what happens after the meeting? So obviously there's two outcomes. We get them as a, actually there's three. We get them as a client, which is what we want. They need to think about it. Or they say no. Um, it's, they say I'm not sure yet. Yeah, not sure is the, is, but they're not, in my experience, no one will say no at this point. It's either I'm not sure or yes. Okay, so for the yes, it's easy. We then do whatever the, the firm does and how they do it with the compliance stuff in terms of getting the, all, the, all the details. I'm going to ask questions here that are going to give me a bit of um, leverage. Okay, and the questions that are going to be aligned to, so they're not going to think, that's a weird question. So for example, I'll, I'll, I'll use us as an example. So let's, let's say the, the accountancy firm is our client. Okay, and let's say Ellie's got a co-authored book. Okay. So one of the questions the, the, the partner asks is, tell me about your sales and marketing. How, how's your business growth going at the moment? And let's just say that the person says, actually, I could do with a bit of help, but you know, to be fair, we're not growing as fast as I'd like. Mm -hmm. And obviously, that, that's completely in line with the questioning. OK, so the partner makes a note. But also, what we do is, so the partner makes a note, yep, they need business growth help. So, what we're going to do after the meeting, we're obviously going to send a letter. We call it a com sales conversion letter. Okay. But in that letter, it says, hey, Bill, remember when I asked you about your growth and you said, actually, you could do with a bit of help. I've got this fantastic book. I really recommend it. It's from El co-author book, Ellie, blah, blah. Um, it's going to make a massive difference. So like the, the, the potential client's thinking, Jesus Christ, because they don't know it's part of the strategic plan. They're thinking, Jesus Christ. He paid attention, and they sent me a book for free. I mean, and there's some other great examples in, that we've got where another question could be, tell me about your time management. How is your time management? Again, it's completely in line with, with being an accountant. I really struggle with time management. And there's a book by Dan Kennedy, you've heard me speak about, that's called No BS Time Management, Ruthless, blah, blah, blah. It's brilliant. It's on your recommended reading list. So the accountant could send the time management book to the prospect. See what I mean? So when you, when you take this view from up above and you create a strategic system, you can put stuff in place to your advantage because you know it's a strategic plan. Nobody else knows that it is, but the effect of it is huge. So that's what we talk about when we say systemize. And then obviously we look at this and we think, right, what can we automate? Not a lot of that, but some of it. We can't, remember, we can't automate people, but we can systemize what they do process. and process it, yeah. So all this is a process and a system, 
and there's certain stuff we can and can't automate. So when, when clients on Mill Plus come here, this is one of the things we take them through. But we do one for lead generation and one for customer maximization. But when you do something like this, though, you're building value and you're making it easy to convert the client. And none of this is difficult. You just got to think step by step. And you've got the start and you've got the end. You just got to fill in the blanks.